Hey guys, Mr. Bear Arms ICT here. Today I'm going to take one from The Vault and do a first shots and thoughts style video, which is really unfair for this gun because of how often I take it out and how much I've shot it. It was the first gun that I purchased that was over 1500. I can't remember if it was either 18 or 2000 at the time. Uh, and it was definitely my first bullpup. And it's been the best purchase that I've, I, the best gun that I've uh, purchased over the years. And it's none other than the IWI X95 with suppressor. I bought mine in black and the caliber is 300 blackout. The reason I did 300 blackout is a very long story, complicated and drawn out. But basically I wanted something in a short package, suppressible, and 300 blackout was the hip round when I bought this, so I decided to go with it. This does not have the short barrel like I would love to have, but it does have a 16 and a half inch barrel, which makes the overall length about 26 and an eighth of an inch. It weighs just over uh, eight pounds once you add the scope on the top. The trigger pull weight's around five to six pounds. The nice thing about this bullpup is that it takes standard uh, AR mags. Today, the MSRP is $2,049, I believe. The gun itself is stock. It has a 3X uh, primary arms prison scope on, on it and a dead air Sandman K uh, suppressor. The grip on this thing is, is a little different than your standard AR-15. As you can see, the trigger guard is the full length of the handle. Uh, this definitely makes it hard to stand with a bipod but who puts bipods on X95s anyway? But anyway, you can get a more traditional grip and trigger guard if you like. I just have not done that on mine. The mag release is where you'd expect it to be on an AR-15. When you pull your trigger finger out of the trigger guard, it's just right there and easy to manipulate. Even though the magazine is behind the trigger um, under your arm almost it's still very easy to operate the bolt release is not where the ar-15's bolt release cell is on the side so in this bullpup design the mag sits behind the grip and the mag release sits behind the that mag uh, coming from the ar platform it does take a few minutes to get used to as you're working through your drills, but uh, it, once you get used to it, it did seem to get easier to use and seem to be make more sense than the AR platform's uh, bolt release design. Overall, it just works. It was comfortable, easy to shoot, a little odd, awkward, trying to get the you know, magazines in, stuff like that, until you started repeating them and uh, getting reps under your belt. But overall, this is one of my favorite guns that I've, that I've ever bought. For this first thoughts and shots style video, uh, I took out the X95 with Capital City 220 grain subsonic ammunition, uh, the Winchester deer rounds, and uh, Freedom Munitions 124 grain supersonic and American Eagle 120, sorry, 147 grain supersonic. For the magazines, I used a Lancer Systems 20 round mag and a Magpul 20 round mag. I also put on the end of the, the barrel a Dead Air Sandman S, not K like I said earlier. All I could hear when shooting subsonic ammo was the recoil spring that was uh, compressing and expanding right under my ear on the cheek pad. I was standing for this test and not very stable due to an injured elbow, but it shot well. I did take it to the range, 100 yard range last month and bench shot it and was able to get two inch groups at 100 yards with just off the shelf ammo. Every time I run this gun, I just giggle. It's so fun to shoot. It's, it's a dream. It's a blast. And it gets a few looks at the range. The X95 has a full length Picatinny rail on the top. And then the three, six, and nine positions on the handguard, uh, it also has Picatinny rails. So with the Picatinny rail, rails, you can have just about any attachment that you need or want. One of the nice things about the X95 
is that you can change out, switch out calibers. I've got it in 300 blackout. I can also put the nine as well as the 5.56 barrel on it without changing anything else or very little else. Uh, and starting in about 2020, I noticed fewer and fewer conversion kits have become available. Geisley does make aftermarket triggers for them. Man uh, Manicore Arms also makes uh, accessories and, and uh, replacement parts for them. I'm sure there's others as well, but those are the two that I that I keep looking at. Some of the pros to the X95, the Tavor X95, it takes Stanag, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, or you know your NATO typical AR-15 style magazines. So those are very plentiful. It has run flawlessly with every ammo brand, every ammo weight that I have fed through it, every mag that I've th thrown at it, and what's not to like about the look? It's definitely different. Uh, it's, in my opinion, very cool. And it's a compact gun, just over 26 inches in length, compared to the roughly 33 for an AR-15 with the stock collapsed. However, it's not cheap. I think, like I said, MSRP is t over $2,000 uh, as of the filming of this video, which again is, is not cheap, but I truly believe you get what you pay for. And if you're used to the AR controls, the AR style controls where they're all at, the bolt release is uh, in a weird spot um, on the X95 compared to the AR15. And it is a side charging uh, gun, which again takes just a slight bit used, uh, getting used to if you're used to running the AR-15 style. And lastly, uh, I think a big con is that OEM parts are, are sparse. Um, there's some on the IWI website, but you really can't find um, many aftermarket parts for for the Tavor X95. In conclusion, I love this gun. It just shoots, sh is easy to shoot, shoots everything, looks cool. Uh, I even had one guy at the range when I took my brother-in-law out with it without the silencer commenting on how quiet it is without subs. So do you have any experience with the Tabor X95? If so, please leave a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are.